रिपोर्ट सारी तैयार है हाँ हाँ सारे हैं सब एक्यूरेट है ऑफकोर्स अपोलो ट्वेंटी फोर सेवन से है आपको तो पता है ना पापा योर थायराइड रिपोर्ट्स हैव टू बी एक्यूरेट अरे सॉल रेड तुम बिल्कुल अपने माँ पे गई हो <laughs> हेल्थ के मामले में श्योर रहना जरूरी है इसीलिए हम देते हैं एक्यूरेट रिपोर्ट्स वो भी एक साथ टाइम पे डायरेक्ट अपोलो से डाउनलोड अपोलो 24/7 नाउ तो इसमें अलग क्या है कोल्ड स्टोरेज डिलीवरी इंसुलिन फॉर डायबिटीज एंड अदर मेडिसिन भी लेकिन इससे होगा क्या मैम मेडिसिन फुल्ली इफेक्टिव रहेंगे पक्का सर अपोलो ट्वेंटी फोर सेवन ऐसी एक्चुअली इनको डायबिटीज है नीड टू बी श्योर हेल्थ के मामले में श्योर रहना जरूरी है इसीलिए पाए कोल्ड स्टोरेज मेडिसिन सिर्फ चार घंटे में डायरेक्ट अपोलो से डाउनलोड अपोलो ट्वेंटी फोर सेवन नाउ हेलो अपोलो फैमिली डू यू नो दैट आउट ऑफ द ग्लोबल पॉपुलेशन हु सफर फ्रॉम आसमा इलेवन पॉइंट वन परसेंट आर फ्रॉम इंडिया वेल Asthma has a lot of treatment options right from inhalers to avoiding allergens to corticosteroids there are many options available which one suits whom and when to stop such treatments and when to take an inhaler when not to take an inhaler also what are the new age asthma treatments like bronchial thermoplasty or immunotherapy or what are the new biologicals that can be used in management of asthma let's understand more of this in this week's apollo 24/7's health app Joining us shortly is Apollo's respiratory medicine specialist, Dr. Narasimhan. See you there, eleven a.m. sharp. It's always been there standing between you and your health a wall between a pain that won't disappear and a doctor who magically appears between a long wait on a hospital bench and staying right where you are at home between finding yourself out of medicines and finding them at your doorstep whatever the time between years of health records all over the place and all your records in one organized access from anywhere place between your current regimen and the recommended routine the wall we don't need it anymore Say hello to Apollo 24/7. This is India's largest end-to-end -end omni-channel healthcare ecosystem, designed to touch more lives than ever before, and delivering its promise in three important ways. One, listen, talk to us anytime from anywhere. We've got 7,000 doctors and 30,000 healthcare professionals listening. Two, advise. We'll give you expert advice, advice you can rely on. because it comes from india's number one healthcare provider three assist we bring you india's largest health network of pharmacies clinics hospitals and health insurance experts 20 million people already trust us for their care and a further 50000 people are discovering this every day apollo 247 expertise is for everyone Namaskar welcome to Apollo 24/7's health app where we bring you an Apollo expert every week week after week we bring you an expert where you can ask your questions today we are going to talk about risk factors and treatment options which are available for asthma joining us very shortly is Dr Narsimhan R a senior consultant respiratory medicine from Apollo Hospitals Greens Road Chennai so get ready with all the questions that you want to ask about asthma and its treatment options i request all the audience who are watching this live we request you to uh, type it type your question or query 
in YouTube chat box so that I can take it up live here with doctor. And also while asking your question, I would request audience to type their age, gender, and since how long, all the details if possible in one question, rather than splitting your question, because while you split the question, there are other questions which come in and uh, I'll not be able to read the entire question. So requesting you to give all the details possible in one question itself and give me time to go through and uh, I'll place the question before doctor. All right, so let's start, get ready. There's also, let me remind you that there is a health quiz which is coming up. You can win prizes and gift coupons from Apollo 24 seven. I urge you to download this app, which brings entire Apollo hospital literally to your phone, to your doorstep. All right, let's start the show today by talking about this wonderful initiative, which is called Sachi, Saving the Child's Health Initiative, which is free pediatric consults for every child in need. Sachi in association with Apollo 24 seven is on a mission to make Quality healthcare accessible to underprivileged children at no cost. More than 10 pediatric specialties who are renowned Apollo pediatricians are benefiting children across India through this program. Do scan the QR code which is there on the screen. You can know more about it and spread the good word. All right. So it's time for me to invite uh, Dr. Narsimhan on the show. It's a great pleasure and honor having you here, Dr. Narsimhan, who's a senior consultant uh, respiratory medicine at Apollo Hospital of Greens Road, Chennai. He has vast experience, more than 35 years of uh, experience in treatment of severe respiratory ailments, and he's been with Apollo Hospitals more than three decades. He is an HOD of EBAS and Bronchial Thermoplasty Services, fellow of Royal College of Edinburgh, Glasgow, and American College of Chest Physicians. He has done more than 30,000 bronchoscopies, 2,000 fluoroscopies, and 1,700 e-bus procedures. And uh, he's published more than in more than 85 articles in national and international journals. He's on the editorial board of many leading chess journals. It's our honor having Dr. Narsimhan on the show. Here's Dr. Narsimhan. Namaskar, Dr. Welcome right. to Namaskar. the show. Yeah. Namaskar. Namaskar. Yeah. Good morning. Yeah. Good, morning. Good morning. Good morning, sir. It's an honor having you here. I understand that you are a very, very busy person, but spreading awareness coming up as well, Asthma Day, 3rd May, we celebrating Asthma Day. So yeah. how important, doctor, is to have awareness regarding asthma? Yeah, that's an excellent question to start with. Because most of us know that asthma is a disease and many people feel that asthma is an acute disease wherein you go to your doctor, have a prick, and forget about it. Many people do not understand that it is a chronic disease. And this World Asthma Day is to create an awareness that asthma is a disease like diabetes mellitus, like hypertension, like heart disease, like infox, where they need regular long-term treatment to prevent them from worsening and also have a chronic disease. So create that awareness to bridge this gap between the patient and the doctor and sometimes even among the healthcare professionals who are not aware of these inhalers and newer nuances in the treatment of asthma this world asthma day is smart to create an awareness wonderful doctor so understanding that asthma is a chronic uh, condition and which affects many age groups i've seen children in our family to my father to my uh, all age groups so is this not a specific age group or when does it, what is the onset and what are the reasons for asthma? Yeah, there is nothing like a specific age group. I keep telling that asthma is a disease of the genes. It's a genetic disease. It is an inherited disease. The tendency to bronchospasm or to tendency to wheeze or tendency to become breathless is an inherited character. It can manifest at any age. It can manifest in the pediatric age group that is in the children's. It can manifest at adults. It can manifest at a older age. Because nowadays what is happening is we do not give opportunity for the asthma to come out. So you see we go to the gym also. What we do? We go to gym, get into the lift, go climb the thing, then go inside and sit and do all the exercise. We do not give giving opportunity for asthma to come. Come down in the gym, sit in the car and go back. 
only when you give an opportunity for asthma to come out by way of exercises doing something like pulling the like olden days we are uh, drawing water from the wells or okay, getting water yeah. from the taps yeah getting water from the road ends street ends to the house in a tap then you will feel breathless and you will go to your doctor so that's the reason why asthma does not manifest nowadays having said that there are certain causes which cause this bronchial asthma like for example smoking is one of the most important cause of bronchial asthma that's one of the reasons why asthma is being included as one of the ncds non communicable diseases it's included into that part along on par with diabetes and uh, hypertension and so on because we know that it is a disease which is going to once diagnosed as asthma asthma will be with you it is not something that you get cured of asthma you may go into a phase of remission sometimes what happens you take the inhalers regularly for some time if you are one of those mild asthmatic you might remain without an inhaler for 6 months or 1 year or sometimes a change of place he might be out of the allergen so you may not get asthma at all so you might think i am cured of asthma you are not you have only removed yourself from an atmosphere which is causing bronchospasm for you see people who are asthmatics in chennai for example in chennai if you are an asthmatic when they go to us you know it is a relatively dust free atmosphere they are very comfortable yeah. there they don't get asthma at all they will keep raising heaps on us us is a nice plain country but you can have pollen allergy there some people have worst asthma in us too you can have a pollen allergy you can develop bronchial asthma you go to new zealand you can have a lot of pollen you can have asthma there is no dust at all there but lot of pollen there so it is a multi factor like for example smoking is one then uh, exposure to dust is one working in a dusty atmosphere or infection can precipitate an asthma psychological and emotional factors can precipitate an asthma some of the food factors can precipitate an asthma like for example some people when they eat uh, cool drinks especially the citric juices lemon juice orange grapes pineapple such foods when they take nuts when they take dry fruits when they take they can get asthmatic there are multiple right. factors for bronchial asthma yes doctor uh, as you were talking you were also mentioning allergy as a major reason so allergic reaction yeah. and then asthma So, is allergic yeah. asthma a different sector altogether, or uh, is it just no, no, one no. of the many? No, no, asthma we call it as a blanket term, but it's a bronchial asthma. The right. bronchial asthma, one of the factors, is an allergy. One of the most important factor is an allergen factor, the dust allergy and the food allergy. They are the most important uh, factors for the bronchial asthma. That is the reason why, if you look into my prescription, I split them into two. The first page would contain the drugs which you take care of dust for example you cannot get rid of you have to live with the dust you can keep your house clean your ac clean your car clean but once you are out in the road you know you can't keep anything clean so that has to be handled with the medication which we will be discussing shortly the other part you take the back side the food factor the thing that is in your hands in your control which you can avoid and reduce the intensity of the attack so that food fat those food factors is in your hand that you can control it and keep your attacks under control great so here's govind sinha who's uh, typed in youtube who's saying what is the difference between asthma and copd yeah the main difference between asthma and copd is copd with the terminology the copd expansion is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease Asthma is a reversible obstructive airway disease. We call it as a road. In olden days, I used to call asthma as a road, COPD as a chronic disease. Road is reversible obstructive airway disease. You start okay. these patients on inhalers. It is reversible. They become absolutely all right. They don't have any symptoms at all. Whereas COPD, which is directly related to smoke-related permanent lung damage. is irreversible it is a progressive disease it's a handshake of condolence the day you make a diagnosis of copd you are going to worsen gradually so there is a lot of difference between copd and asthma and asthma diagnosis is better than a copd diagnosis because it is completely reversible you can lead a normal life you can be an actor actress sportsman sportswoman whatever you want you can be if you are an asthmatic but with copd you are likely to have problems in the long run Okay, so now with the treatment options, doctor, there are various treatment options according uh, to you. And who yeah. requires a continuous monitoring and treatment, and whose asthma can be reversible, and what are the latest uh, treatment options? 
Yeah, you see, there are uh, asthma. We this uh, global initiative against asthma. There is one organization which create which has which is creating an awareness on this uh, bronchial asthma by doing this World Asthma Day and so on. So we have classified this asthma into several kinds. You know, so we have the, the grade five. That is grades. In that, the mild to severe. Person, now all these grades, you need. Inhalers as the treatment of choice. That's most most important part. Inhalers are the mainstay in the management of treatment because we should take oral tablets. Oral tablets have a lot of side effects and also high toxic effects. So that is the reason why we do not suggest oral tablets as a means of treating asthma or as a means of maintaining asthma patients. Inhalers is the best means of treating. So that is a number one, that is whether you are a mild asthmatic or a moderate asthmatic, persistent, severe. In all, inhalers are the best. I want this to be very clear because when the patients come, they will ask me, Sir, inhalers nahi likhe, Dr. Sir, aur kuch dawa likhe. I tell them, see, we are writing inhalers because there is a least toxic, least side effect. You don't have any problems with that. So inhalers is the best. Okay. Having said inhalers are the best means of treatment, which inhaler is the best? There are two kinds of inhalers available. One is a reliever inhaler. Other is a controller inhaler. So preventer or controller. Preventer inhalers are steroid inhalers. Reliever inhalers are the ones which cause immediate relief. There also is a problem because reliever inhalers are not very costly whereas the preventer inhalers or the preventer reliever inhalers are very costly preventers are to be costly means it is affordable but people always think and two things they think of one is the immediate relief two is the cost if with a reliever inhaler if they puff ones they become already they think this is better than a preventer inhaler because preventer inhaler only prevents an asthmatic attack it repairs the asthmatic uh, airway and prevents it uh, from getting an acute attack so preventer is definitely much more important i'll give you a cl classic example of a car painting or a wall painting you know, if you paint the wall if some function goes on if you have to paint the wall means if you do a good cleaning up then we call it tinkering in the car you know, we do a good tinkering okay. in the car okay. and then you paint it you now the paint stays longer it looks attractive on the other hand just for the function if you just go and paint the car what will happen it look good on day one Within the three or four days, it fades, and you can see the difference between the painted area and the unpainted area. Same thing happens with the lever and controller. If you use the controller, the controller is a steroid inhaler. That's the most important part. I'm stressing because steroid inhalers are the best means. They take long to act, but they persist. They remain symptom-free. They remain attack-free with the controller inhaler. Reliever inhaler is the one which helps the patient in giving an immediate relief to the patient, but it causes damage. I again tell you, reliever inhaler, regular use will cause damage to the airway. Like we have seen in the car, same analogy. You keep doing the touch-up point too longer, you will see our old taxis and autos and all, there will be a lot of holes in the basement. You know? That's because you keep painting the wall only, and it's needed. you are tinkering, not tinkering at all. So holes will form. Similarly, the airway will get damaged. So reliever should be used only when there is an acute attack. Preventer should be used to prevent an attack, which means preventer has to be there on a regular basis or a preventer plus reliever combination should be there in all bits. These are the two main means of treating asthma. The other means of treating like identifying the allergens, thinking of biologicals, thinking of bronchial thermoplasty. I think we will come to it as we discuss it. So the main Thank part you, is the inhaler. I want to stress that inhaler, steroid inhaler, combination inhaler. They are the best means of treating asthma. Right. There are a lot of questions which already have uh, uh, started uh, yes. on the YouTube, Doctor. Let me start asking one after one. Uh, first and foremost, to all the audience, I would want to request that this show will continue in English for the larger benefit because people from multiple states are joining, not just Hindi. Whenever required, whenever you cannot understand, Doctor will try and explain in Hindi. But uh, to, to address larger issues, we are going to use English as a language, which is common for all the states. All right. Sir, uh, initially, a lot of children's uh, parents have uh, started to write uh, three year old child suffering from asthma, 12 year old boy uh, suffering from asthma from five years. Bijan Sharma is asking this question 12 years boy suffering from asthma almost from five years. Why is it so difficult and why do children have so much of asthmatic attacks? 
I have friends in school uh, who I used to see and uh, suffer with asthma as well, doctor. Yeah, there is uh, nothing like why. As I told you, this is this is an inherited problem, and children can develop asthma. Most of the asthmatic uh, attacks in children has been attributed to the junk foods that uh, most of the children are now eating, like these uh, pastas and uh, like these chips and a lot of cheese and pizzas. Sit in front of the TV and keep eating. Actually, we all uh, eat through the TV only. You know, we don't. We <laughs> see the ad in the TV. And when you see the ad in the TV, that we want to eat that, whether it is a jam, that is a cheese, or whether it is a butter, or whether it is a vegetable, whatever, you know, we want to see, watch the TV and then eat. So sit and uh, keep on eating these junk foods, make them prone, make them overweight, make them allergic to things which they have not been exposed to in the past. And in the process, each country is forgetting their own food that is good for their atmosphere say for example in tamil nadu if this food is good in punjab the different food is good in bengal different food is good we have started uh, see if, for example in tamil nadu if rice idli dosa is good means you know, we eat more of chapati we like chapatis and puris now and there they have started eating those it has been god created thing we have been changing in a big way across this so that is why from childhood itself we are seeing the asthmatic smell because of this mostly because of lack of exercise change in food habits and of course the inherited character plays one of the major uh, factor in children developing an asthma one silver lining of these children is most of the children around and in the puberty age they grew out of this asthmatic spells they become better the 30 40 percent of the people get better symptomatically we always tell the people that's there is one glimmer of hope for pediatric asthmatic children but it doesn't mean they are cured. As I say, the intensity will be there. If you check a provocative test on them and then see, they will be asthmatics only. But they are not symptomatic. And if they are not symptomatic, we don't need to treat them. We can just wash them for some time and until and unless they become symptomatic. Done. Uh, so here is uh, uh, Ajay Kumar who is asking, I have allergy to dust pollution, pollens, etc. At present, I'm using two inhalers. I'm also suffering some from COPD since 2015. So management is getting difficult. Is there a permanent cure of asthma? Mr. Anil Kumar Sharma is also asking this question. Yeah. So there are two things. There are three important things in there. One is bronchial asthma, he has said. And then he said he is also a COPD patient. Number three, he is allergic to, he said. So in this, I'll first take the allergy test because we will discuss the first two in detail. Allergy test is, uh, you can do the allergy test, identify what one is allergic to, and also desensitize them if they are one or two allergens. It's possible to desensitize them so that the intensity of the attacks can be brought down. So allergy tests in immunotherapy are useful in severe asthmatics who are not getting relieved with the steroid inhalers, who are to use oral tablets quite frequently, or who are to go to doctors for injections, or who are requiring hospitalizations too frequently. For such patients, we can think of allergy tests as one of the options. The COPD and asthma, I always say these two terms are used very loosely. COPD is a term that we use only when you do a pulmonary function test and demonstrate that your PFT is not reversible with inhalers. What we do in pulmonary function test, we first do a pulmonary function test and then after that if you demonstrate an obstruction, you give an nebulizer or an inhaler and then recheck and then say and if there is a reversibility, you say it is asthma. If there is no reversibility, you call it as COPD. Many times what happens, we don't do a pulmonary function test at all, we said, or probably half the pulmonary function test is done and the label is given. Without a history of smoking, without a history of exposure to dust, constant dust at home or mining dust at home, without a demonstration of PFT with reversibility, one should not take that label of COPD on him without uh, any reason. That has to be demonstrated. And if there is COPD, it is an entirely different ball game. Treating COPD is entirely different from treating bronchial asthma. They are two different diseases. To answer the same spectrum, airway diseases, but both are different. Done. Uh, Mr. Palkirid Brar is asking, how much is nebulizer effective in asthma control? Yeah, definitely it is a very very useful uh, drug but generally 
uh, nebulizers are to be used in the hospitals. I prefer my patients to use only inhalers only at home. If you are forced to use a nebulizer at home, means there are two things that have happened. One is your inhaler technique has not been supervised. You are not able to do the inhaler properly and you are not been taught to use the inhaler. That's number one. That's the most common one. Number two is nebula. You have a very severe asthmatic attack, which means your severe asthmatic attacks are the result of your non-usage of inhalers in the past. So that is the reason why you, know, is a, you must have, everyone should have started as a mild asthmatic. My general symptom is he is a mild asthmatic. It must have been started with. He has not seen the proper doctor. He has not got the proper advice. He has progressed from being a, an intermediate student to a graduate, to a postgraduate, to a research scholar. So at a research scholar level. You use nebulizer at home and at a graduate and you maintain yourself with inhalers. Yes. All right. Siddhartha Das is asking this question. My name is Siddhartha Das, 22 year old. I have BNS and asthma since childhood. What should I do? I consume Montelukast and uh, Flutuk uh, zone spray daily. Sometimes I get tired. Saas pool jata hai very easily. Is yoga helpful for DNS and asthma? Yoga is not helpful for DNS. Uh, asthma, yes, it helps. Yoga will always help in teaching respiratory exercises. It's a very good means of uh, keeping your breathing under your control. DNS is an anatomical defect. Def de the deviated nasal septum is an anatomical defect. Some people benefit after the surgery for this DNA. There may be a 30% reduction in their uh, allergic rhinitis symptoms and so on. And uh, fruticosone nasal spray is one of the means of treating it. And think the ENT surgeon or the pulmonologist can advise how long they can take. Because it is uh, not like same as in bronchial asthma where we tell them to use it regularly. Long-term use of these uh, steroid nasal sprays in the nose sometimes can result in problems. So they must be under regular follow-up with their doctors. DNS can be corrected if one has a persistent nose block or one has a snoring as one of the main symptoms along with the bronchial asthma. We call that as a voice. OSC phenotype, an obstetric sleep apnea phenotype, which means you must handle that snoring tree, snoring, and also bronchial asthma quite effectively. Otherwise, uh, they may not see a good response to the treatment. Uh, Ajay Kumar ji, I had a question before, but I am a little running and I am afraid of running and I am already taking two inhalers. Uh, this before, uh, he, is, uh, he was also asking about, will this be reversible? And also he was asking if I had uh, seen the question. Mahesh has also asked this question, doctor. 26 year old, I have breathing problems since very long time. Especially winter, I have a uh, uh, severe problem. Okay, most of the asthmatics have problems in winter only because winter is a time when you have the seasonal variations because your throat is uh, hyper responsive to the temperature variations. And also some of the pollens uh, appear uh, during this uh, winter seasons, actually. One can get a winter. That's a commonest way of manifestation, winter asthmatics. The first question is uh, an important question. If you are an asthmatic, I always tell all my people, if you are an asthmatic, you have been suggested an inhaler and you have been using it regularly. And if you are not finding the kind of improvement that you expect to find, or if there is a worsening of your symptoms of flight, you must get back to your doctor and get investigated to see whether there is any other coexisting problems. Nothing prevents an asthmatic from having a heart problem or a high blood pressure or some other uh, coexisting problems. So he may be developing a kidney problem. He runs, he gets breathless, he takes rest and uh, he uses one puff and again that doesn't mean his puff has to be increased or something like that. He must go for an investigation of uh, other diseases also. Very, very important point. Coexisting problem can worsen bronchial asthma. So that you must wow. remember and go to your doctor. Okay. So Govind Sinha's question also is somewhere related. Are there any oral medicines to control bronchial asthma to support inhalers if it is not controlled by inhalers? Yeah, there are. We do give this uh, uh, drugs. Uh, like acibrofelin and uh, derifelin and so on to patients who are in this uh, moderate persistent asthmatics. You see, each each drug has an upper limit cutoff. See, for example, you take a steroid inhaler, fruticosone, there is an upper limit. You can go up to this level. Budicianide, you can go up to this level. Beyond that, 
if you keep increasing the inhaler dosage thinking that it will give you a benefit it will not give you a benefit you will only be buying the side effects by stepping up the dosage of the inhaler you'll be buying more side effects so what you must do when you reach the cutoff point of uh, the fluticasone or abirucinase or any steroid inhaler that you are using that is the time for you to switch over to the oral drugs you must switch over to the oral because you need something more powerful than the inhaler why i am telling this point very importantly is many people think oral tablets are to be started first in a prescription if a doctor writes an inhaler and a oral tablet what the patient will do is he will not use the inhaler first he will use the oral tablets only oral tablets are more powerful than the inhalers that means for a mild attack you are using a oral tablet so always use write the, my, my advice also to healthcare provider write only inhalers in your prescription then write the oral tablets so oral tablets will cause definitely better when you have reached the high end of your inhaler dosage then you have the oral tablets which are in the form of uh, methylxanthine and the other uh, oral drugs that are available which are they depending on the patient's condition and the physician's choice and physician's comfort level they start the patients on oral tablets and put them on those medications there are medications available but they should not be used as a routine in the first instance the first choice i keep insisting on is a controller inhaler that is a steroid inhaler or a combination of a steroid with a long acting beta agonist great doctor sampath biswas is asking i have developed asthma after covid last year uh, is it possible that i will get rid of it soon i need to take inhaler quite often she covid is uh, one disease which has exposed many other diseases most of us have learned lot of things in uh, covid especially the pulmonologists have learned quite a lot from the covid uh, see the covid the first uh, two waves the alpha and the uh, delta waves of covid we say we saw a lot of diseases like uh, fungal diseases and the uh, aspergillus fungi, fungi the mucors and so on which are so what we have learned, learned it's now two years since uh, covid has ravaged the whole world we had realized two important things one is uh, acute disease acute fungal infection number two is they can develop a vascular problem pulmonary embolism and so on which can be treated and they can get better the third one is a reactive airway disease that is what we call as the bronchial asthma like uh, symptom this could be two one is this patient could have been an asthmatic tendency to asthma would have been there he has never been exposed after the covid his asthma is exposed and he will keep getting this asthmatic cells on and off whether he will get quite frequently or not only time will tell us because whether he is becoming a mild asthma, that pulmonary function test might be uh, helping us if we do a pulmonary function test and then see if the pf pft is showing a reversible airway disease we can say that this patient is an asthmatic or if the patient shows a non reversible airway disease we can say that this patient has developed a copd like symptom sometimes the pulmonary function test might show a restrictive lung disease and the ct scan may show fibrotic changes so fibrotic changes are happening so most of the times what is happening is covid people the general rule is they get out of most of the acute general rule but the asthmatic people when they develop this reactive airway disease like symptom how they would react in future is a matter of uh, say for example if it is a young child 17 year old child who developed covid and developed asthmatic symptom he goes to us after some time means he may not get asthma at all we might say he is cured of asthma actually but if he goes and works in an industrial atmosphere where he is exposed to a lot of dust he'll keep getting this asthmatic swell rightly or wrongly we'll attribute this the whole thing to the covid only it only means he must have had a tendency to wheezing it has exposed so covid has exposed many asthmatic patients in this series but one one thing i must say it in covid what has happened is the acute asthma swells came down because there was no pollution at all people were not there on the roads in the first few waves they were all at home only they were not coming out at all no exposure to pollen no cars no motorcycles no pollution so we did not have any hospital admission acute admissions in that period but definitely the asthmatic prevalence might go up in another one or two years to come we might see there will be an increase right uh, sardarya is asking this question i'm on inhaler seroflow and tiova i get severe asthmatic effect uh, attack and resort to nebulizers are there any new treatments available yeah if you are one of those who has to use nebulizers quite frequently for control of asthma 
there are two means of treating this. You are at a level of uh, Gina grade four or five. We have two, three methods of treating this. One is a biologicals we have. Other is a bronchial thermoplasty we have. Biologicals are uh, one against an IgE. We can check your serum IgE levels and see if your IgE levels are very high. We can subject you to these uh, biologicals called a vermolizumab group of drugs, which reduces the IgE intensity and the intensity and frequency of attacks can be brought down. That is, if you are one of those using nebulizers or if you are re uh, requiring too many hospitalizations, those things can be reduced and you can be brought back to the inner level. Similarly, there is one biological for eosinophils also. If the eosinophils are pretty high, you have biologicals like uh, Bacindriba, you have Bendralizuma, you have, you have Mepolizuma. These, there are drugs available there. Depending on the physician choice and your condition, they can be used. The other means is if you do not have any of these biologicals, any the IgE is normal and your eosinophils are normal, that is what is called a bronchial thermoplasty. Bronchial thermoplasty is a procedure where so the, the, it's, it's, it's based on the principle that in severe chronic asthma, what happens is the smooth muscle becomes uh, hypertrophied and the airway diameter becomes small and they remain consistently and persistently small. The diameter is always small. The bronchial thermoplasty is one procedure wherein we can dilate the airways with a radioactive probe. So we take a probe with the bronchoscope, we take the radioactive probe inside, like an angioplasty, we go and create and increase the diameter of the airway, thereby the intensity of attacks come down. In my personal opinion, I always say bronchial thermoplasty is superior to this biological. The reason being, in bronchial thermoplasty, we are creating an anatomical change in the airway itself. Whereas in this, you are creating a biochemical change. If the IgE is high, you are bringing down the IgE severity. The use fields are high, you bring down the use of But the airway hyperreactivity remains. Whereas in this, we are creating an anatomical uh, dilatation of the airway and the airway diameter is big. The intensity of the attack comes down, the severity of the attack comes down. But for that to happen, you must be thoroughly investigated by a pulmonologist and decide on whether you need a biological or whether you need a bronchial thermoplasty because bronchial thermoplasty is done in three separate sittings under general anesthesia and the effect lasts quite long period. But you must be a severe asthmatic, the mild moderate asthmatics cannot be subjected to this because they get better with inhalers itself. So this applies only to the person who asks that he is using nebulizers quite frequently and he is getting hospitalized too frequently. For such people, these methods can be tried. Uh, doctor, out of curiosity, I'm asking you this. Is bronchial thermoplasty also an option for COPD? No, bronchial thermoplasty is not an option for uh, COPD because, as I said, COPD is uh, a non-reversible no. disease. It is not a reversible uh, disease process. That's number one. And number two is there are changes also in the lung occurring, not only in the airways. In COPD, the emphysematous changes, if they occur, I don't think anything can be done. It's a progressive disease because the smoking, it goes inside the lung parenchyma. The nicotine gets deposited inside the lung and they remain permanently inside the lung itself. So dilating the airway alone is not the solution in a chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. You need to handle the emphysematous part also. That is why if the patient has developed an emphysematous chest, for him, apart from the inhalers, if he's not improving, we suggest lung transplant as one of the options for COPD patients, not these thermoplasties or other methods. Done. Sir, uh, here's uh, Sheikh Basha who's asking, age 27, I'm getting abnormal ab abnormality while testing a pulmonary test. I'm working in an underground mining uh, condition. So I know the causes. What are the precautions to be taken? First and foremost precaution, if possible, he must come out of that uh, dust exposed area, mining area. If he is working in the mining area, getting exposed to the dust quite constantly means he must come out of that area because he is likely to develop more frequent VC spells and the airways are going to be damaged quite badly. So he must come out of that mining area and then go to some place where the exposure to the dust is relatively less so that his attacks can be kept under control and managed with inhalers itself. Right. Doctor, one question, when there are certain conditions where people have to work, 
construction or mining or many other uh, pollutant uh, causing areas what are the precautions such people have to take are there respiratory masks which are available to control or air purifiers will they help masks will definitely help these people from getting exposed to dust but it is a fine dust that causes asthma it is not a large uh, dust that causes the asthma the fine dust can uh, pass through your mask and get inside if you want the fine dust that's we keep telling about the virus particles now that we know so much about the mask you know the covid mask if you take they can prevent even the very fine viral particles from entering but you can't wear a N95 mask and uh, work in a construction atmosphere because you'll become breathless. Even surgeons cannot wear. We can only, only when you're going into a high in frequency zone, only you can wear such N95 mask. Otherwise, a routine surgical mask will suffice. So there, the treatment is with inhalers. Keep the airways attack free. You cannot prevent the airways from getting exposed to dust. Lung is an open organ. So this open organ is exposed to dust wherever you go, whether it is a restroom that you go, whether you go to the bathroom, toilet, hotel, cinema, theaters, wherever you go, you are exposed to dust. So you must keep your airways clean, means you must wear a mask, infection free means, or if you are an asthmatic means, use the inhaler regularly so that you don't develop any permanent waste. That's the best way of treating, not wearing a N95 mask. Routine mask, yes, which we are going, if you are going to walk, say, for example, people who, the termites, you, know, you yourself can see them. They'll wear a tight mask and then do that when they do the anti termite work when they do, they wear a mask. So that's the best way of uh, preventing acute uh, asthmatic uh, things. All right. Uh, Sandhya Suresh is asking Does stress trigger asthma? Is dermatitis also related to asthma? Yeah, yeah, stress can uh, uh, worsen the asthmatic exposure. It has been uh, very well known that emotional factors are one of the most important causes for bronchial asthma. Once you remove the emotional factor and uh, they remain, uh, they become attack free. Such people may not need uh, uh, inhalers also, only removal of the stress factor is the most important part. Dermatitis, yes, allergies, atopy, what we call it, you can have an allergy in the skin, you can have an allergy in the nose, you can have an allergy in the lung, you can have allergies in so many places. So they both are related. Definitely dermatitis and asthma, eczema and asthma are all related. But one thing, one of the observations which I have noticed in the last 35 years is that people who have an active dermatitis and active eczema, they do not have this busy spell section. They don't get asthma that frequently as many pair. It is, if you have an asthma that is very active, skin problems also do not manifest. So many people, when someday what happens, if we go and treat the dermatitis quite aggressively, their skin allergies will start, but their asthmatic spell will uh, start manifesting more uh, frequently. So it is a balance of uh, treatment. You need to balance and treat them quite. There are cases where people are coming to me, so I can live with uh, dermatitis, but I don't want bronchospasms. Bronchospasm, so you to at least treat my bronchospasm quite effectively. I can each and then be happy with that. They'll say. Wonderful. Uh, there are two questions regarding children, doctor. One is Ashish Saha, 17 year old uh, male asthma patient from childhood, taking Symbiocot uh, Turbo Haler for two years earlier. Normal inhale uh, for two years earlier, normal inhalers. Whenever I go to play, uh, especially outdoors, I have breathing problem. I have to break. I have to take breaks in between. This is one question. And uh, Putul JNV is also asking, what are the medications and precautions that we should follow for an asthmatic kid who is less than five year old? Less than five year old asthmatic. And the other first question you said is, first question, what is the first question? Seventeen year old asthmatic. The first one what is seventeen year old. Huh. Sir, uh, he's using uh, Symbiocot and Turbohaler for ah, years. Ah, Symbicot is using, yeah. That's a good inhaler. Symbicot is a good inhaler, combination inhaler. That is a preventor and a reliever combination. And it is a superior device that's available in the market. And if he has got used to that device very well, means he must use it regularly. There is nothing like he can stop the inhaler. But whenever he goes out, these hmm. two inhalers he's been using for two years. But still, yeah. he has problem going out, but he has to take a break while he's playing. Physical exertion. Oh, that means he needs to step up the inhaler dosage, probably. That's not sufficient. What he's taking is not sufficient. He needs to step up the inhaler dosage 
accordingly with the advice of his uh, pulmonologist he must step up his inhaler dose that's his solution and the five year old uh, kid again the solution is same May the steroid inhalers have to be started and steroid inhalers have to be given regularly without any break many children you know have many parents rather have a fear that steroid inhalers might stunt the growth that's the reason why many pediatricians and many uh, parents are also wary of giving the steroid inhalers but on the other hand by not exposing these children to steroids and by not keeping the asthma under a good control the the growth rate is uh, coming down much much worse much worse than the yeah. use of steroid inhalers itself so you must keep uh, the, uh, the priority there is to keep the child attack free so that the growth is normal rather than keeping the child suffering with the wheeze not to use a steroid inhaler thinking that steroid inhalers might cause some growth stunting yeah um doctor we've been talking about asthma and being reversible here's uh, sri ganesh arya who's asking I am 20 year old. I have been suffering from asthma since my birth. I have used nebulizers, inhalers, rotahalers, but I have got no cure since then. Do I need to continue them? And is this a condition which is going to be with me for lifelong? No, ideally speaking, such people have to be worked up very well. If your bronchial asthma is not coming under control with all the medication that you are used, is two things we generally, in a written action plan, I always right like to know whether they have used the inhalers regularly many times you know patients have told me they'll say yes if i tell them if you are using the inhaler they'll say yes how often are you using morning and night that's what they'll keep you need to prod and ask you when you ask them are you using it when you don't have an attack then they will say no no i don't use it when i don't have it. i use it only when there is a problem but i have a problem daily which means he has not used it regularly. Now he is having a problem on a daily basis. Now he is using it regularly. That means you have brought the bronchial asthma from mild level to a persistent asthmatic level, which means at that level, inhaler may not work. You need to have a combination of inhaler with some other drug. So that investigation of uh, bronchial asthma is a great art. That has to be done by someone more experienced. You must see a good pulmonologist, an experienced pulmonologist, so that he can identify and classify him at watch level. Nowadays, what is called, there is a personalized treatment for asthma. We phenotype them, actually. Personalized treatment for asthma is coming in a very big way. We don't use right inhalers for all people as a panacea. You need to identify them, whether you have a sleep apnea syndrome, whether you have a high Ig level, whether you have a high eosinophil level, whether you have an underweight asthma, whether you are a smoker asthma, you need to classify them and personalize the treatment for that particular asthma. That's what he needs, not change of various devices like from inhalers to rotahalers to turbohalers to nebulizers. No, that's not the solution. Done. Uh, uh, this is a question regarding the long term usage of medicine, doctor. Karthike Natarajan is asking, doctor, I'm a male 62 year old. I've been using Cerobid and Budacot inhalers for 30 years. Is there any harm from such prolonged use? So inhalers are uh, very, very safe drugs provided you take proper care after the inhaler dosage. So this brings out an important question. If you use an inhaler, what precautions you must take? If you use the inhaler, say for example, say you are a butyrsonide, he has mentioned, a butyrsonide inhaler is a steroid inhaler. Any steroid inhaler, for that matter, if you keep using it on a regular basis, the if you puff, you know, when you puff it, it's only about 5% that goes inside the lungs and acts in the airways where it is supposed to act. Rest of the 85-90% of the medicine stays inside the mouth and on your fauces and on your vocal cord. It remains there only. It does not part of it. So what one has to do is, after every inhalation, if you read the instruction carefully, it will be mentioned. After every puff, you must rinse the mouth with water and spit it out. Spit it out. Rinse it and spit it out. So that no steroid stays in the mouth. If one has been using an inhaler for, say, for 20 years, two puffs a day, two times a day, four puffs, times 30, 120, times 12, 140. Like this, if you calculate for 20 years, you know, so much of steroid in if he is not rinsing his mouth at all, what will happen is this steroid inside the mouth, the steroid inhaler, the steroid powder inside his mouth can cause some laryngeal uh, deposition, some hoarseness of voice, or the patient can develop a fungal infection, 
or fungal colonization. Some people are in the habit of swallowing it. After inhalation, they go and drink water immediately. So if they keep drinking water like they say for three, four months, if they drink water, the steroids can stay inside the esophagus. They can have monilasis. They can have stomach symptoms. They can have acidity, gastric problems they can have. So you must take proper care. That is why whenever you visit an asthmatic, whenever you are given a prescription for asthma, you must ask your uh, physician in attendance, what are the precautions that I must take if I use it? It is not just like popping up the tablet actually. Every Everything needs a proper instruction. The written action plan is very important. You need to have a written action plan. Inhaler, what are the steps in use of inhalers? Post inhaler use, after the inhaler, what I should do? What are the do's and don'ts of the inhaler? What problems they can have? This is not to frighten you from using the inhaler, but to keep yourself attack free and problem free in the inhaler. It's not a chocolate or it is not a rice in which you can enjoy eating, which you can enjoy taking it actually. It's a drug after all. And the drug has its own some side effects. You must keep away from those side effects by taking proper care. Okay, done. A lot of people are asking about uh, the the side effects or long-term usages, I think you have answered really very clear. I am not going to take those questions. People who have asked questions about long-term usage, I think doctor has covered really in detail here. Sandeepa Kandimalla is asking this question. My father is a known case of asthma and using Moxifluorota caps inhaler twice a day since eight years and once daily since three years. He's in a Montelica, Montec LC since three years. Will he develop any resistance to antihistamines? Usually it does not. When he's using it in combination with Montelukas, they don't develop any uh, resistance to that. But you must find out from his doctor whether he needs that uh, Montelukas antihistamine combination for such a long time or whether he can make it on a need basis. Because after all, this is a reliever. This Montelukas plus antihistamine is a reliever drug. And the reliever drug generally need not be taken for such a long term. Well, he has stepped down the inhalers from Maxiflow from two caps to one cap. He can also step down his uh, Montelukas anti semen combination also, or maybe he can stop and make them on a need basis. So that would be my opinion, but nevertheless, he must consult his physician and uh, do that. Because relievers need not be taken for a long period because they don't act. Relievers act only when there is a problem. When there is no spasm, when there is no nose block, when there is no sinus problem, you don't need to use a Montelukas on a regular basis. Especially if you have been successful in coming down on your MaxiFlow inhaler from five, four capsules to one capsule or something like that. That itself means his inflammation is under control. If inflammation is under control, his symptoms will be under control. When the symptom is under control, he doesn't need a symptomatic uh, drug at all for that matter. It's a pretty high dose. He doesn't need it. With that. Mr. Rajkumar Garg had a bypass heart surgery. There is an asthma mm. problem while walking and uh, even after 8 months of uh, bypass heart surgery, I still feel breathlessness. Is it related to asthma or bypass? You must get worked up. We cannot exactly say whether it is related to asthma or because of uh, this thing BiPAP. BiPAP will correct his, uh, by bypass will correct his uh, heart problem. Heart. But uh, his uh, bronchial asthma problem will remain like that only. He needs regular medication for that. If he is optimally controlled by a pulmonary function test, it shows that his asthma is under fairly good control. He must get worked up by a cardiologist. Yeah. Uh, here's a very strange question. I'm not sure if it's uh, relevant here. Ishwar is asking this question. Good morning, doctor. A person who suffered from asthma during his childhood and uh, did not get any asthmatic, adult, uh, asthmatic attack in adulthood can such person donate blood? He can. Asthma is not a contraindication yeah, right. for donating blood. Not a problem. He can donate blood actually. All right. Chandrasekhar MR, is it necessary to prescribe antibiotics every time patients suffer acute uh, exac uh, exacerbation? Exacerbation. Sorry, I'm not sure if this, this yeah, exacerbation, uh, may yeah. or may not be infection. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, yes. uh, usually uh, in antibiotics are, be, are to be used only when the sputum is yellow or green in color, or when one has a fever, or when his blood test shows a high uh, counts and and the ESR is slightly high. When none of these things are there, there is no need for an antibiotic. Which means patients, majority of the patients have non-infective exacerbations only. 
Infective exacerbations of bronchial asthma is relatively less. So you don't need an antibiotic at all as a routine in most of the asthma exacerbations. And unfortunately, we find in most of the prescription, antibiotics find their place in exacerbations. There is no need for antibiotics unless these three things are there. One is fever, two is uh, sputum that is green in color, uh, the blood count that's showing high ESR and elevated counts. Yeah. Um, Lokeshwaran Guru is asking from New Zealand. I got Omicron variant uh, COVID and within two weeks I got severe cough and went to hospital. Palmi got inhaler. Uh, is this, the, uh, have I developed asthma or is this just a COVID symptom? See, Omicron does not affect lungs at all. Omicron is a very gentleman virus actually. So it just uh, <laughs> touches the upper airway and goes off. But if you have developed uh, wheezing following uh, cough and wheezing following Omicron, means you must make sure whether what you had is uh, Omicron or anything. There are two various ways of diagnosis. Omicron, if you do the, uh, the uh, this RT-PCR testing, you can see S gene dropout and see whether it's only Omicron. Or you can do a CT scan and see whether you have developed any lung problem. Or if the patient has a history of bronchial asthma, if the patient has history of bronchial asthma, he developed a Omicron and he is now having a cough and wheezing means, it is quite possible he might uh, be, a, he might have a tendency to develop wheezy spells whenever he is exposed to dust and allergens. It's not necessary that he must continuously have the symptoms, but he must be very watchful of his uh, symptoms. Okay. Dr. Last two questions that I would want to wind up the session today. Bablesh Mishra is asking, uh, sir, are cough and uh, asthma directly related? My wife, uh, uh, since 30 years, she is getting an asthma attack mainly in the morning, uh, 5 a.m. Rest of the day, she is fine. Why does asthma occur in the morning only with her? See, there is an variant called a cough variant asthma. Some people have cough only as the manifestation. They don't have bronchus problem. When you clinically examine them, you will have wheezing. But their main symptom will be cough only, dry cough. Dry cough spells is one of them. That is, they have this, uh, you know, technically speaking, we have the vagus ones are active. They need vagolitis. They need uh, the ciprotropium and also that apart. From the patient aspect, let us come to the patient aspect. The cough is more common in the, the early mornings, 5 or 4 o'clock is because the bronchus motor tone comes down in the night you know, the tone comes on so like our all our muscles become flaccid when you go to sleep you know we are not as active as strong and as powerful as we are suppose we someone wakes you up and asks you to run you know i don't think you will run the way you used to run in the daytime actually. it's not possible because muscles are all hypotonic same hypotonia sets in the airway also there is a hypotonia in the bronchial smooth muscles also but at that stage, when the bronchotonia occurs, when any exposure, any change in the cold or AC, too much of cold because of air conditioners or the fan having a dust, the bronchospasm can be more severe and such patients predominantly manifest with dry cough spells, number one. Number two, these people also can have this G or the gastric esophageal reflux too, where the reflux of the acid can occur in the night. They also manifest as dry cough. So cough variant asthma is a known feature and this predominantly occurs in people who have GERD problems or who have the bronchomotor tone that is reduced in the nose or people who have a problem with the nose, the post nasal drip that can slowly trickle down to the trachea and cause cough as a predominant symptom in the early in the morning when they are just about to get up or around 4.35 when they just get up to use the restroom. That's the time they'll get it. So it's a very well known feature, cough variant asthma. The treatment is slightly different than that of the routine asthma. Done. Uh, so there are a few questions which we've already been asking, Mr. Maiza Islam, uh, Mr. Ra, um, Siddhartha Dada Das, all your questions have been answered and Ms. Sumana Jana, all your questions in some other variant we tried to answer. Uh, Pooja, we cannot ask your question here and Kamal regarding the mining environment, yes, doctor has already given an answer to that. Please go back after the session to check if uh, your answer. Doctor, we'll have to take leave from you to, today. Uh, before we wind up, do give us uh, how to manage asthma in long term and what are the tips, top tips to take care. Yeah, so my advice to uh, bronchial uh, asthmatic patients is that, that they must use the inhalers on a regular basis. 
they should not think that inhalers are uh, uh, addiction farming and they should not think that it causes a heart disease they should not think that it weakens the heart they should not think that they are better than oral tablets that, that they are inferior to oral tablets and tablets are better than inhalers so these parts plus the steroid inhaler has to be used regularly not the reliever inhaler the steroid inhaler or the combination inhaler are to be used regularly to keep themselves attacked from the VC spells. Always think that bronchial asthma, acute exacerbation is an acute lung attack like situation. We call it as an acute heart attack. You run to your doctor. Similarly, an acute lung attack also you must run to your doctor, get treated in an ICU or a hospital. And after that, after that I underline, continue the medications regularly as per the advice of your doctor. Never think that asthma has been controlled. You went with an attack, you got better, and you forget about the illness. No way. You cannot forget like that. You must be under the follow-up of a doctor. Maybe in a smaller dose that your doctor would advise you to take some medications. I thank you all. I thank the Apollo Hospital 247 for the wonderful opportunity to share my thoughts on this bronchial asthma. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. You have been extremely patient and so informative that your answers really, really were relevant. Thank you so much, Doctor, Thank for this wonderful Thank time. You. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. That is Dr. Narasimhan for us. And uh, your questions have been answered. Now I'm going to ask you three questions. Help is coming up. You have to answer these questions over YouTube chat only. Winners' names will be announced at the end of the show. Once you have declared a winner, you have to write back to us at marketing at apollo247.com so that gift vouchers will be shared with you. Winners will be selected at the sole discretion of our Apollo 2417. All right, now for the health quiz. Three questions coming up your way. The first question for today is on your screen. Can an allergic reaction trigger an asthma attack? Very simple thing, doctor. Initial uh, session may answer diya hai unhone iske baare mein. Can an allergic reaction trigger an asthma attack? Yes or no? But simple question number one type kijiye. Yes or no answer type kijiye. Then question number two. When is World Asthma Day in 2022? Iske baare mein bhi humne baat kiya hai. Awareness ke baare mein baat hai. It's just going to be uh, celebrated. It's coming up. Question number two is when is World Asthma Day in 2022? And question number three. In how much time can you consult a doctor using Apollo 24-7 app. If you have Apollo 24-7 app, open it up and see and what is the minimum time that you can consult a doctor do using this app. These are the three questions. While I'm waiting for the YouTube uh, winners, I'm going to give away the coupons which you can use in Apollo 24-7 app. The first coupon is use code FIRSTVC. The code is down there, the first VC. You get 150 rupees off on first online consultation. Doctor consultations direct from Apollo. Download Apollo 24-7 app and you can use this code first VC and you will get a first online uh, consultation pay 150 rupees off. And also on Apollo 24-7 app, here's yet another uh, code that you can use. First three, the numerical three, F-I-R-S-T three, you get up to 25% off on online medicine orders. Direct from Apollo, order KJ medicines and you get them delivered straight at your doorstep. Download Apollo 247 to use them. Alright, and I am waiting for uh, the winners. Let me see if people, you are on the track. Uh, what are the answers that are uh, coming up? Alright, no, yes, two minutes, third May. Alright, alright, a lot of answers are coming up. Um, in the meanwhile, use these codes HH247 to get up to 199 off an online consultation with Apollo doctors and up to 20% off on medicine orders as well. This is the code that we give away every week. Use code HH247 uh, on Apollo 247. Well, we are uh, waiting for a winners. One winner number one is Karthik Raja M. Then 30 minutes, 2 minutes, ah, within seconds. Immediately, instantly, oh, no, 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 not instantly, 15 minutes, 3rd May, 
yes okay lot of you are answering i'm still waiting uh, for the other winners to be selected by the team in the meanwhile let me also give away what's the next week's topic next week is an interesting topic where we are going to talk about blood disorders what is it that you should know about it tune in to help our next sunday that is 8th may 2022 11 am and you will get all the questions uh, answered regarding blood disorders and the winners are here shawn david kartik raja m and kartik shawn david kartik m raja you are the winners for this week please write back to us and claim your gift vouchers from apollo to 247 all right thank you so much all of you for joining uh, this week we thank dr narsimhan for his wonderful valuable time and great uh, experience that he has shared with us thank you once again all of you namaskar